Good afternoon and welcome to another Macron Group webinar. My name is Charles Zona and today we welcome back Sandy Cook. Sandy is going to talk to us about preparing hairs and fibers for cross-sectioning. Her presentation is titled Splitting Hairs and Fibers, Four Methods of Cross-Sectioning. But before we get started, I would like to give you a bit of Sandy's background. Before joining the Macron Group, Sandy worked at the FBI for over 16 years as a trace evidence examiner. She has taught numerous workshops and short courses on crime scene evidence collection and trace evidence analysis. Sandy is a fellow of the American Academy of Forensic Sciences and a founding member of the American Society of Trace Evidence Examiners. She has spent five years researching variations in human hair microstructure at Pennsylvania State University, where she earned a PhD in biological anthropology. Sandy has published papers on topics such as forensic analysis of hairs, fibers, fabric damage, and feather identification. She also teaches the forensic hair analysis course here at Hook College of Applied Sciences. Today's webinar is a little bit different in that it is a recording and not live. However, you can still ask questions by typing them into the questions box. We will answer all of your questions individually in the coming days. And as always, this webinar will be available as a recording on the Macron Group website under the webinars tab. And now I'll hand the program over to Sandy. Thank you, Chuck. Today I'm going to share a few methods that I find useful to section hairs and fibers to better observe their cross-sectional shape and internal structures. A cross-section is made by cutting across material at right angle to its main axis. We can use physical cross-sections to more clearly observe the shape of a fibrous material, and I'll be sharing a few methods throughout this webinar. Today I'm focusing on hairs and fibers, but you could use these methods for other materials just as easily. The main concern for any cross-section method is that you're careful to not alter the shape of the material that you're trying to analyze, especially if you're hoping to get accurate measurements. The four methods I'm going to discuss are how to use a hot plate in polyethylene to embed materials for cross-sectioning. I'll demonstrate how to use cross-section plates an ultra microtome for ultra thin sections, and how to visualize the cross sectional shape of a fiber by optical sectioning. So I'm presenting three physical sectioning techniques and one optical. For the first method, you can use a disposable pipette or sheets of polyethylene film. You will also need a hot plate, glass microscope slides, single edged razor blades, and double-sided tape. Here, I'm using a polyethylene pipette. I thread the hairs down the tip of the pipette and cut the pipette to the length of the hairs, or you could cut the pipette prior to placing the hairs inside. The pipette tip is placed on a slide, and that slide is set towards the edge of a hot plate. I then place another slide on top of this, slightly offset at, at an angle, so it'll, it'll be easier to separate later once the polyethylene has melted. So here I'm holding on to the edge of the slide and using a tool to press down on the slide and press down the polyethylene to make sure it melts with as few air bubbles as possible and really surrounds that hair. You can start to see the change in the polyethylene as it melts around the hair and embeds the material that you're going to want to section. You can use the same method with polyethylene sheets. Here I have placed several fibers from a sample of carpeting on top of one sheet of polyethylene that was cut to fit within the width of a slide, and I place another sheet on top of that. And then I'm going to try to align the fibers 
you know, parallel to each other as best as I can. Um, here. And then I'll place another glass microscope slide on top, slightly offset, and place it on the hot plate until the polyethylene has bonded together, embedding the fibers within basically a sandwich of polyethylene. After I let the sample of fibers in, embedded in polyethylene cool, I'll peel it off the slide and then I'll use a single-edged razor blade to slice sections, as you can see here. And then those sections are turned on their side, and you can focus on those with a stereo microscope to start to see the cross-sectional shape of the fibers. I find that placing the sections on double-sided tape allows me to hold the sections upright in the position so that I can examine them better under a microscope and really see the cross-sectional shape. The benefits to using the polyethylene method for cutting sections are that it's fairly quick and easy, and most lab will have these supplies on hand. Some drawbacks may be that it can be hard to orient the samples at exactly 90 degrees to the main axis when you are embedding and sectioning. And when you are sectioning by hand, you may alter the shape of the material. So you may not be able to get accurate measurements. The next method that I want to show you is how to use cross-section plates. These are really useful because they double as a slide to place on your microscope stage and you can examine the cross-sections directly. The first thing to do is cut a length of thread and thread both ends through one of the holes, creating a loop. You're going to then place the material of interest, whether it's a group of fibers or uh, a single fiber, and add some extra packing material, ideally of a different color so you know where the, the material of interest is. Place that within the loop. And the packing material is really to fill in the space in the hole in the cross section plate and to help hold your fibers in place. You're going to pull this thread to tighten the loop and tighten the fibers of interest up against the plate so that when you draw it through, you'll have your fibers there. You want to pull the material slowly through the hole, but not too far, just enough so that you have a loop extending through the hole. Then turn the plate over and using a razor blade, you're going to slice off the excess on the back side. Now, if you have a dull blade, it may take a little bit more time. So you may want to uh, have a, a good supply of razor blades so you can uh, after you've used one for one section, then get a new, new blade for the next section. And this shows why you need the packing material, because there's some manipulation around the fibers here. So you want it well, well held in place. So once you've trimmed the material, for the most part, uh, you coat it with clear nail polish, and this will hold the, the fibers in place as you start to cut the next side. And then you'll let it dry. And once the back side has been, the nail polish has dried, um, you're gonna turn the plate over and carefully slice off the remaining loop of fibers. So 
so this is the point where you want it well held in place by both the nail polish and the packing material so that when you use the slide to sort of just slice off that the fibers are still held in place. You may have to trim a bit more to get the cross sections to be even with the surface of the cross sectioning plate. But this will take a little bit of practice. And again, coat this side with clear nail polish. Your cross sections are now firmly embedded in the slide and preserved, so you're now ready to use this slide to examine the sections under higher magnification with a light microscope. These are examples of fiber cross sections when viewed at higher magnification with polarized light microscopy. And these are some hair samples. Human hair on the left and non-human animal fur on the right. The benefits of using cross section plates are that once you have cut the sections, the material is ready for analysis using a microscope and the nail polish serves as the embedding material to preserve the cut sections. Some limitations that you should be aware of to re um, relate to how much packing material is used. If too much is added, you may not be able to pull the thread through the hole. But if too little is used, the sections may not stay in place. Um, the amount of tension placed on the thread and from the packing material as you pull the material through the hole in the plate can also cause some of the materials to deform. So it may take some practicing to become proficient at sectioning with this method. The next method I've used to cut sections is with an ultramicrotome. This requires more specialized equipment. An ultramicrotome and a glass or diamond boat to cut the sections, resin and molds to hold the samples, and an oven to cure the resin. Before sectioning with the ultramicrotome, the sample has to be oriented perpendicular to the cutting blade. So there's a bit of time needed for setting up the sample within the instrument prior to sectioning. The boat with a diamond blade at its end is filled with water. And as the sections are cut, uh, they float on the surface. With these ultra thin sections, I found that some tended to wrinkle but by waving a cotton swab that had been dipped in chloroform over the sections that were floating on the water, that the chloroform exposure helped the sections to flatten out. Then staining the sections helps to reveal the structures of interest. And I have images that were captured using oil immersion microscopy and transmission electron microscopy. The benefits to, of using an ultramicrotome is that you can set the thickness of the sections to be cut and there is less sample distortion, so there is greater accuracy in any measurements that are taken. The limitations are going to be related to the amount of sample prep and equipment that are needed. The next sectioning me method that I want to discuss is one where you optically section a material instead of physically cutting across its length. So using a compound microscope in samples that are longitudinally mounted you can figure out the cross-sectional shape of a fiber by moving the stage up and down and focusing at, on the different planes of the fiber. So here I have a trilobal carpet fiber that you can see the different planes of the fiber coming into focus and going out of focus. And you can see that the process reveals that the fiber is a trilobal fiber. You can train your eye to recognize different fiber forms by using known samples that you already have cross-section images of, either from having made physical cross-sections or if you have SEM images of the fiber ends. And then if you, when you examine the samples of the fibers in longitudinal mounts and compare it to what you know is the cross-sectional shape, you will become familiar with the different features that help you determine cross-sectional shape optically. Overall, physically cross-sectioning the hair or fiber will reveal much of the sample morphology, but the embedding methods differ in how the samples may be packed, oriented, and how they may be deformed by the act of sectioning. 
The choice of sectioning method will depend on what equipment you have access to, the time you have to do the analysis, your sample size, and what information you need, such as do you need precise measurements or just information on the size range and sample shape? Thank you so much for your attention today, and I hope that you will be trying out one or two of these methods the next time you need to determine the cross-sectional shape of a hair or fiber. If you have any questions, please email us, and I will get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you. I would like to thank Sandy for doing this presentation today and all of those out there who joined us and tuned in. We really appreciate it. And please check out our webinars page for upcoming Macron Group webinars. Thank you.